one more thought on Ferguson. Uh, I believe 30% turnout versus I think 16 in yeah. the county countywide for an April election. Is that uh, should we be impressed with 30%? I was not, and it was uh, significantly more than what Ferguson had seen in previous years. But after all of what we saw in, in August and in, in November, of, you know, tear gas going off in the streets every night of you know, protesters out there. 30% of the people show up. I mean, you would think it would be much higher after all the all the stuff that went on there. And the only other closing thought I have about turnout is, I think it was high for a municipal election, and as we mentioned before, the protest quote unquote protest candidates didn't end up winning. But I think there may be some hope for them in the future. The aforementioned Bob Hudgens did get more, almost as many votes as two candidates combined in a previous election. He could potentially run next year. And you know there were other factors that probably made their runs very difficult. Uh, Fletcher's name recognition and Bell's um, pretty high high end campaign team. So we'll have to see whether that turnout can come out next year as well. Let's skip across the river for just a second to East St. Louis. Amika Jackson Hicks is now the mayor of East St. Louis. Uh, upsetting, I guess you would have said at least uh, before all the uh, the kerfuffle that happened with the ballot. Uh, the former mayor Alvin Parks. What's going on there? Can a mayor make a difference in a city that yeah. I think that the troubles are well documented? It's tough. Uh, East St. Louis, you know, I've, I've been there, I've covered many things there, and you do sit back sometimes and wonder how could somebody take control of this? How could you improve the many challenges that face East St. Louis? Uh, Alvin Parks has been mayor for two terms. He comes from a political family that's been there for a long time. So does Miss Jackson Hicks. Uh, you know her you know relatives Eddie Jackson who's a, a, polit a state representative there I, I don't think much is going to change based on who's the mayor in the past you know we've seen East St. Louis has gone through a number of mayors you know Carl officer was mayor for there a long time and had many scandals uh, uh, I think Alvin was able to avoid any of the major problems that some East St. Louis mayors have had although he did uh, run into some trouble with uh, a son of East St. Louis Dick Durbin who's a uh, high profile senator now and it's very rare you see a US senator actually get involved in a municipal election yeah. and he did I was gonna just say I mean Dick Durbin from what I recall has refused to ever get involved in like yeah. Springfield politics especially when like Rod Blagojevich was reaping havoc and making everybody mad I did find it kind of interesting that he did get involved in that race and he's very concerned about like the nightclubs being yeah. open which doesn't seem to be something that a U.S. senator, especially one with that much high up ranking, would do. But I, he's from East St. Louis, so I think there's like a real personal connection. It there. is very personal. And but when you see somebody who's so powerful in the corridor of Washington come back, and I've seen him on the streets of East St. Louis, who he he was really very. It was a personal issue about the hours of how long these clubs were staying open, and he wanted that stopped. And. Alvin would not do that. that uh, the club revenue is a significant part of the East St. Louis system. It's almost the only thing you have left other than the churches. And they're going to try to keep that together as long as they can. And so, you know, other than that and the Casino Queen. So I don't know. I, I, but it, it is very interesting that you see a senator come down and do that. And the, and the incumbent uh, Parks had to run as a write-in because he didn't get the required number of and signatures for, to get on the ballot. I think he would have won. If, if he were on the ballot. A a Alvin has done well in all of his previous elections. He still actually got quite a few write-in uh, votes. It's very hard to get any significant amount of write-in votes anywhere. Yeah. And he got, he, I mean, he did fairly well. So Let's switch back to this side of the river to St. Louis City Hall. We have, uh, on the next segment, we have three uh, young, we're calling them, I and mean, they certainly are, but uh, young aldermen. Uh, for the St. Louis Board of Aldermen and two elected for the first time. Anything going on in City Hall that we should make of uh, this youth movement? Well, I, I think you, we have seen young candidates there before, young people elected. One of the challenges at City Hall, I think that you have 28 aldermen, so it's still a minority on the board, but it's also that learning curve and figuring out how to get any of the issues that are more important to younger people uh, done at City Hall, and you still have an older constituency in some of these uh, different wards. Uh, it, it, it is interesting, though, to see that, you know, we have uh, the new alderman, Jack Coder, who's going to be here, uh, who represents downtown. So these are high profile wards, too. These are important, uh, you know, things that get a lot of attention. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how it's going to play out with uh, a lot of these issues in the future. I, I do think that there. I, th I think it was mentioned before that there is a, a pretty grand tradition in St. Louis politics of youthful people entering. Um, I think Mayor Slay entered the political arena 
either in his early 30s or late 20s, and yeah. been shamed all the same way. And there has been, on other levels in St. Louis governments, kind of a mini youth movement. Joshua Peters, a, a state representative who represents part of the north side, I think was about 25 when he was elected. Michael Butler, uh, also who represents kind of a central corridor north side ward, is in his late 20s as well. And there are other people on the Board of Aldermen who range from their late 20s to mid 30s. So I think that especially with this, this, this idea that the city needs an infusion of young people to basically you know, sustain itself. To I keep think, it alive. To keep it alive. I think it's only inevitable that youthful individuals are going to start being in the, 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 the palace of power, so to speak. One interesting thing, though, is the mayor's staff. He's seen significant turnover in his staff in, in recent months. But a lot of the uh, older guard people that were with him are no longer there, and he's replaced. I mean, many, many people on his staff are all under the age of forty. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the city councilor is under the age of thirty-five, I believe. Uh, Mary Ellen uh, Ponder. Mary Ellen Ponder, who's his chief of staff, who's replaced Jeff Rainford, is uh, thirty-four, I believe, well, and, and so uh, Patrick Brown. I, I don't even know if he's thirty. Well, the, the so, state auditor now is thirty-two, or is going to be thirty-two. So I guess it's a part of a statewide movement. But yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs>